Welcome anybody. Well, I wanted to redo this zero overhead string object because I think I can do it a little simpler and I'm going to talk a little bit more and I'm going to reveal the inner workings of the string object itself and um, kind of what nifty trick is going on inside there. What I have here is a standard console program again when I create it and run it it just pops up the console window and you press enter. I have two functions here one's a control test and one's the experiment test. What I want to do is start with the control test. This will be the no boop version. This will be kind of the way the way things were done before object-oriented programming. Without an object, it's just going to be a buffer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to de declare a buffer. And this, the buffer is going to be, it's a local varia that's going to be located in the data section. That's a little different. The keywords changed a little bit from before, usually in other compilers. And this one previously was static. Uh, I, I felt it was a little ambiguous based on um, the fact that I have two data blocks. So I now have data. It means that this variable will be on the data block. What we're going to make is a DW. A DW is a two bytes per character and named my string. We're going to initialize it with hello world. Okay, now to print that, that's all we do. Now the experiment is going to be yes object oriented programming, yes oop. Now I'm going to start out and I'm going to make my object here and it's also going to be located in the data block so it's going to be static data. This will be an object that's created at design time in program space. It's going to be a string. Now a string is defined in my runtime and we'll take a quick a little peek at that later and see kind of what the inner workings of string but for now just think of it as an object. We're going to name it my string again. So uh, both of them are named my string. Both of them are in the data block, but they're from two different functions and they're not going to get mixed up. I'm going to skip a line here because there's a line I want to type in there, but I'm going to skip it first. I'm going to invoke console.co.writeLine my string. And when I run this, let's create it. Let's run it. We get hello world and nothing. It's because my string doesn't default with any data. It defaults as an empty string. The part of the neatness of the string object is that it didn't crash. Uh, it, it wasn't a null pointer, a null pointer in, inside there. It does use a pointer in there. Uh, it, it defaults to be a non-null pointer which is kind of unheard of, but I'll show you how I do it. And when it's not set to anything, you end up getting an empty buffer or a zero length string and it printed nothing. Now, this is the same as the video before. I have something I haven't changed. It's still here called change the value of. Now,
hello world in French. This line will not execute uh, during runtime. This is a design time or compile time, I should say, line of code. This will process when the data block is created at compile time. This will change the variables within the string object. It will change the text variable, to be more precise, to be have some default data in it. So that's, we'll get into that a little bit here. Let's just uh, take a look at this first, see if it works, see if I got it right. Okay, so it worked, that's good. We're gonna go to the debugger and kind of see what that looks like in the debugger as well. Okay. Here's our console window open it up. I'm gonna drag that off the screen. Here's our control function. And below it is our other, actually, they're all really close together. <laughs> it's not a big program. Um, it's just going to load RCX with this number 14150. The debugger thinks it's hello world, and the L means it's two bytes per character. I'm going to follow that in dump. This is essentially our data block. Not the very beginning of our data block. I believe 14,000 is the beginning. But that's where I have some hidden module UDT variable in there. It's not really hidden, but uh, here's our variable, our first variable. Uh, it's a buffer. I'm going to go up one line. You can see the line before it is kind of some hidden properties of the buffer. One is, oh, zero C is quantity used, which would be the length of your string. 18 is the number of total characters in the buffer that are available. So the compiler is padded a little bit. So RCX gets loaded with the address of the string and it calls right line and we get hello world. Okay, let's go out of this one and go take a look at the next one. This is our experiment, which is like I said, just right below the other one. It is actually loads RCX with 14180, which is actually already in our window here. It's just down here a little lower because these variables are right next to each other. This 20 is a pointer. But it's, it's a special kind of pointer called a relative pointer, which means you take the address 14180 and you add the value 20 to it, and you get 141A0. 141A0 is the address of our string, which is Bonjour Le Mans. And that's kind of the inner workings of my string object. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, the 14180 is a pointer that's not a null pointer. It's actually a hard-coded pointer. 20. 20 is an immediate that's hard-coded in there. But it is a valid pointer because it does point to a string. Um, what's what's kind of neat about this is, is that's how I was able to print out, or not initialize it with a string, and it still printed something out. Because it was a buffer that was a zero-byte buffer. Uh, with at least quantity used was zero, even though the buffer was, you know, larger. So uh, I'm kind of stumbling around here. So what happens is, is if if your string is less than 30 characters, then or 30 or less, it'll fit in here, and it'll just be right here in the data. But if you try to initialize a string that's larger then it will go out to the memory manager, and this cannot be done in design time, by the way. It'll go to the memory manager. Has to, this, this, if it's a larger string, it has to be done at runtime. It'll, be, it'll go out to the memory manager and kind of malloc a buffer, and then this pointer 
will be adjusted to point to that buffer. And so you can, this, this string object can handle small strings and large strings, which makes it kind of neat. Also what's kind of neat is our, here's our zero overhead string object. Each of these functions has the same number of lines. Uh, loads RCX, subtract, call, add, three lines. Did I reach zero overhead? It looks like it, but not exactly. Uh, it's because the extra lines needed to dereference this pointer are actually embedded in the right line function. So in this example, it looks zero overhead. Let's fast forward this. Let's go back and change this a little bit. And All right, let's take out this print. Let's not print our strings. Instead, let's move into the Rx register mystring.address. That's the address of the string buffer, address of the string. Now in this string object though, The address is the address of the object, which isn't the address of the string. So you need to access the instance data of the object. And what is in there is text. Text isn't the actually ad address of the string. Text the name is the name of the relative pointer. It has properties that there's the address of the variable, and that's the address that the variable is pointing at, which is actually the address of the string. Sorry if that's confusing. Let's go take a look at. Let's create it, and let's go take a look in the debugger and see what we got. console window, drag that off. Here's our first one. Notice the uh, stack isn't being adjusted by 8. The compiler decided we don't need to do it. And that's because I took the right line call out. But we get in here and we literally have one line of code in a return. It's looking at the 1450. It's the same address. Let's follow it and dump again. So our, our data looks the same. There's two static strings. One's a one's a buffer, the properties before it, hiding before it, and the other one is an object, which is very similar to the buffer, but it has a pointer in front of it. Okay, so one line of code to get the address of the string. Now we're down here, which is just right under where we were, and we get load into RSI. The address 14180. 14180 is the address of the my string object. Add to RSI the contents of RSI. This is where it this is the magic that for relative pointers to uh, for it's a dereference is what it is. This is how you dereference a relative pointer. So RSI is 14.1a0 and there's the address of your string. Alright, so the first function took one line of code to get the address of the string and the second function took two lines of code. Actually three. Which I, I can see right now that it could have done it in two because it could have put RAX there, there, and there, and not even had this third line. So the compiler has uh, got it, and it missed a little optimization there. I'm not going to worry about that. It's close. So one line of code turned into three to get the address. That's pretty close. Is it zero overhead? Not exactly. Uh, 
but the, the string object is, I find to be more handy and more powerful. And I, I think that's pretty good. That's, I'm gonna go back. Let's fast forward this. Press center. Okay, so this is my string module that's in my runtime. DLL. It is the instance data. It's three variables. The first variable is a DW relative pro relative pointer called text. It's hard coded to be twenty in hex. The next one is kind of a, just a private hidden variable that's not used. Uh, it's, since this variable is a pointer, it's going to be 8 bytes long. This is a DQ, it's going to be 8 bytes. That will take up a whole 16 bytes, which is one row. Uh, which leads us to, and that'll be your 10 out of your 20, to jump over itself plus this variable. And this default data, you never see the name default data, you only see dot text, which is the pointer. It is a buffer that's 30 characters, 30 DWs, you know, 30 times 2, which is 60 bytes. Um, did I say 60? Yeah, I'm saying 60, but it's a hex 60, which is 6 rows. Um, got it set to nothing, which is all nulls. And this pointer, which is hard coded, literally points to this data. And that's that's the beauty of it. It's it's a pointer by definition to be non-null, not a null pointer. It'll always point to data at design time. And you don't need a relock when you load your exe in the memory to make the pointer that point to something. Uh, it's handy. It's small, it's compact, it's... Uh, I, I think it's going to have a big payoff for me for not having as many errors as I could have. Uh, but time, time will tell on that. But this video is about a zero overhead string object and it did look like a zero overhead string object but then we showed that if you want to get the address pointed at the buffer uh, you had an extra line or two lines it should have been one extra line so it's very near overhead zero overhead and that's about as close as i can get for now that's all i have thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it have a nice day